making chev, which is a soft cheese. The stainless steel pot has been cleaned really well with a little bit of Clorox and soap and the milk is standing by ready to be placed in the pot. I have three gallons of milk in the stainless steel pot and I'm bringing it up to a high temperature to pasteurize it. I want to remove any cultures or bacteria that may be in the milk. I also have my supplies, my stainless steel spoon, my big fancy thermometer, and my culture. I'm killing off the cultures that are in there naturally and I'm going to add fromage blanc which is a culture that makes a really awesome cheese. It's important to stir the milk on a regular basis to distribute the heat so that you don't scald it on the bottom. This is three gallons of goat's milk and to pasteurize it, I need to bring it up to the temperature of 165. We're actually getting pretty close now. It takes a while. You have to heat it up quickly and cool it down fast or it gets a kind of funky taste to it. So we're getting close to the temperature. As you can see, the temperature is going up. And we need it to go all the way to 165. There we go. Now the milk is sitting in an ice bath. I'm trying to cool it off as quickly as possible to 86 degrees. At 86 degrees I can add the culture. I continue to stir the milk to distribute the heat and the cool temperatures so that it evenly cools to 86 degrees. The milk is around 86 degrees. It's climbing up a little bit. I just took it out of the ice. So it's 85.9 and it's time to mix in the culture. There it goes, 86. I'm going to mix in three packs of fromage blanc culture into the milk and stir it for around two to three minutes so that it all gets mixed into the milk. So I've stirred in the culture. It's evenly distributed and I'm going to put the stainless steel top onto the pot. And it's going to sit here for 12 hours undisturbed. It's been 12 hours so we're going to take off the lid and look inside. You'll see that there is whey on the top. It's kind of a clear liquid with some cream floating right on top of that. And underneath is the curds. We need to cut the curds and then drain the curds and the whey in a cheesecloth lined colander. This is the cheesecloth and it will keep the curds from going through while letting the whey drain to the bottom of the pot. So what we're going to do is take the knife and go all the way down to the bottom and slice through the curds. The curds are very soft so this is not um, doesn't require a sharp knife. You just need to get all the way to the bottom and come all the way across. You can see the curds have been cut and they're ready to be poured into the colander. So the curds and whey are in the colander and the whey is draining through to the bottom pot and the curds will stay into the colander and the cheesecloth. Our curds and whey are draining and now we're going to place a cover on top 
and let them continue to drain for 12 hours. Okay, it's been a few hours and we're going to take the cheesecloth pull it out of the pot and twist it to help squeeze out more of the whey. And then we're going to leave it on its side. We're still waiting the 12 hours. And we're going to cover it. The cheese has been sitting for a few hours and has gotten smaller as the whey has gone down and so we're going to move it to a smaller colander. See the whey coming out? So I'm going to put it inside of this smaller colander and let it sit for the rest of its time in the smaller colander and I'm going to show you the way. You can look inside. There's quite a bit of it, like half a pot is there. And we're going to use the way for our farm animals. Chickens, the dogs, everybody likes to drink whey. So this evening when we feed everyone, everybody will get some whey. Our cheese has been draining for 12 hours. We're going to unpack it and mix it with herbs and seasonings. Okay, Andre is going to open up the cheesecloth. Show us what's inside. Some nice goat cheese. And he's going to take it and place it in the large bowl. The cheese is now in the bowl. He's going to sprinkle it with salt. We use kosher salt, which is better for cheese making. And he's going to add the pepper. basil and oregano. This will be an Italian flavored cheese. You can use any combination of flavorings that you wish. Now he's going to stir it up really well. Mixed cheese can be used on salads, spread on crackers, toast, lots of different ways you can use soft ghost cheese.